What's up guys, Mr. Slane here with another video about Team Fortress 2. Now you probably just heard the announcement for ESCA, which is North America's premier competitive league, and how they're, going, they're combining divisions. So they're going from three divisions, Open, Intermediate, and Invite, down to just Open and Invite, the Intermediate divisions folding and merging with Open. And so a lot of you guys are probably out there thinking, oh no, TF2's finally dead, like this is going to be the end of the competitive scene, the beginning of the end. But I know there's a core of you out there that are just like me who are still dedicated to TF2, who still want to get good at the game. And so what I want to do is talk to those people, to talk to you guys, and let you know that there is a path forward to, get good at, to getting good at Team Fortress. And if you really want to get there, there's a way to do it. So I'm going to outline four steps for you guys to get good at Team Fortress 2. If you follow these, I guarantee you'll be a success at the game. So tip number one, Get the right sensitivity, get the right setup. So once you have your computer set up, whatever you've got, tweaking it as best you can, get the FPS configs, get the game set up the way you like it, the binds the way you like it, you want to pick the right sensitivity. And I can't emphasize just how important the right sensitivity is for you getting good at the game. You want your mouse to feel like an extension of your hand. You want it to get to the point where it's second nature. You don't have to think about it. You just sit down and you use your mouse and you can think about the higher level parts of the game, right? The game sense, the, what your opponent is doing, how to outplay them, all, all the, the higher level things that you want to spend your mental bandwidth on. You don't want to be thinking about, okay, I need to push A to go left, I want to push D to go right. And the mouse is like key to that, especially since TF2 is an FPS game with a lot of mechanical skill required. So there's two different styles. You guys have probably heard this before. There's the, uh, the wrist use the wrist as a pivot. You can see my, my, my wrist is, is, is red here because I, I use it a lot. Or you could be like an elbow pivot. You can, use, you can be an arm player. And so the arm player is typically good for um, lower sensitivity players because there's just like a wider range of motion here. So you can move your arm more but still be accurate. The higher sensitivity players who use the wrist like me, uh, I'm a medic main. So I want to be turning a lot. I want to be uh, looking around, having high awareness. So there's pros and cons to both styles. You just need to pick the one that's right for you. Typically, I recommend for soldier mains and for medic mains to go for the higher sensitivity. Uh, if you're a scout main or like a sniper main or something, you might go for something lower sensitivity that gives you uh, more accuracy with your shots. But once you've chosen your style, um, you just pick a sensitivity and you don't want to be changing it too much because, again, you don't want to be thinking too much about your sensitivity. So... Uh, what I, what I did when I first started playing the game was you just pick a random number like three, and then if it feels too fast, it's probably too fast. Turn it down a bit. If it feels too slow, pull it back up. And you just keep tweaking that over time. Uh, over the course of like two weeks or so, you should be able to nail down exactly the sensitivity that you want. Feel free to use like decimals. Like my sensitivity right now in game is 2.133. And I don't even know how I got at that number. I just like slowly tweak it just a little bit here and there until it feels very, very comfortable. And... Um, Actually, as I got more comfortable with it, like a couple weeks later, I would end up changing it again. Um, but I would generally try and like keep it about the same. And then I would just like practice super hard on that sensitivity every single day. And so that brings me to my second point, which is come up with a practice regimen that you feel is going to build consistency and build that successful mechanical skill that you need. So I'm going to hop in the game right now and show you what exactly I'm talking about. So every time I pop up in Team Fortress 2, I'll go to find a game, I'll scroll down to create a server, and then I'll boot up TR Walkway, which uh, is like a standard bot training map that has bots moving in different patterns. Um, that is, it's, it's a very standard map here. You guys have probably seen it before. Uh, I've been practicing scout a lot lately. So even though I'm a medic main, I've been wanting to practice my scout because I want to be able to have other classes that I can play in pickup games. So I'll hop on scout here. And I saw this thread on Team Fortress TV a couple weeks ago talking about Quad, who's like one of the top European medics of all time, uh, showing how he practiced scout. And so what he would do is he would come over here, activate the launch pad. And what he would do is he'd, put his crosshair at trying and tracking, trying to track these bots as they go by him. So you try and keep your crosshair on the bot as they walk by you and just keep it on there over time. And you want to be able to move around, you want to be able to jump around and keep that crosshair locked on. Now, obviously I'm not the perfect at this right now and I haven't, and this is actually the first time I've booted up TF2 today. So I'm a little bit rusty. So you're kind of going it through with me. But if I do this for like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes every day that I log in, 
by the end of those 20 minutes, I'm actually very consistent. Uh, it, it always starts out kind of rusty, especially for you casual players out there who maybe only play a couple days a week or only play a couple hours here and there. But every, if you do this every time, if you're serious about TF2 and you want to get good at the game, you just consistently do this and you'll find yourself getting much better at the game. So I do this for a little bit and then I start throwing in shots. And I'm looking to hit like, I don't know, 60 damage shots. That's how I know it's basically a success. Uh, now it also depends on the distance away from me. But I'll typically go for this. If I'm playing Soldier, I can do the same thing. I can log in as Soldier and practice air shotting these bots. I can go for Sniper and practice head shotting these guys. And then I'll go for the pistol partway through as well. And I'll just, I'll just start lining up that pistol here and just try and hit as many of these as I can. Now, if, if I'm having a bad day, I'll be hitting like four shots. So that was three right there. Okay, that was another three. And I count in my brain, like every time, I, every time I just see like, okay, how many am I hitting? But, but I'm tr trust me, by the end, if you just do this for like another 10 minutes, you're gonna start hitting like, you know, 10 shots each. And that just builds your confidence uh, and gets you really warmed up. After I do this, I typically hop into a DM server, which is a server that has real like live players in there. And I try and start shooting those. And then after about half an hour, I'm feeling really warmed up. I'll hop into a real game, real pugs and start playing against other players. And I, that's how I build that consistency. So, sorry, my camera's getting kind of dark here. Going back to uh, my, my four points. Number one, pick the right sensitivity, keep it. Tweak it a little bit, but keep it and keep yourself very consistent. Number two, come up with a practice routine that you go through every single time you play TF2 uh, and keep things the same way, right? So you're gonna wanna like have the keyboard in the same spot, have the mouse in the same spot, and then do the same things when I log into TF2. And that goes to number three, building consistency. You want to come up with a schedule or some kind of way that you can regularly be practicing so that way you can actually get that improvement over time. Um, when, I, when, when people look at, like, let's say, like 25 hours, so let's say you have these two blocks of time, and they're both 25 hours, okay? But one of them is just 25 hours straight, and the other one is broken up into 25 segments. Which one would you rather have? The, the better one to have is this one on the right here. It's 25 single hours broken up maybe over 25 days. If you just practice an hour a day, that'll build much more consistency than 25 hours just blasted through all at once. I mean, if you ever guys ever like study for an exam or something like that, if you're, if you're constantly learning every single day, you'll find yourself like retaining that information and building up that knowledge much better than if you just cram for a test like the day before. Um, and th the same thing happens in TF2. You need time to like sleep and your brain to process what you're doing and your muscles to sort of learn uh, and practice that routine every single time. And part of the reason why you want to have a schedule is because it's so easy to skip that practice, to say, eh, I don't really feel like doing it today. Or, you know, I, people get busy and have other things that they want to do with their time. But if you're very serious about getting good at something, the best way to do it is to have a schedule and come up with a plan for how you see yourself putting in those you know, let's say it takes 100 hours to get good at Scout. How are you gonna get there? Are you gonna blast through 100 hours in seven days? Or are you gonna just like, okay, I'm gonna do this like an hour a day for 100 days. That's probably the more consistent way to get there and the more reasonable way to get there as well. And I truly feel that if you have a schedule and stick to it, you really will start to see yourself improving over time. Um, I've been doing so that, that Scout routine I showed you, I've been doing it for like three weeks now. And when I first started doing it, I felt like super rusty, but actually the last couple of days I've been doing it, I'm kind of remembering what I do with my hand. I remember kind of where, where I put my, myself and I'm noticing myself getting faster and better at over time. So the fourth point that I have for you and the fourth piece of advice that I have is to get help when you need it. And get help early and like get help now. Uh, ideally, you have someone who can coach you and teach you the ropes and teach you like how to get to where you want to go. Someone who's been there before, someone who has an idea of how to get good or has the same goals that you have, but maybe they're a little bit further ahead of you. Someone who could teach you what you need to know. And it's very difficult to find that person because uh, especially like in TF2, it's hard to get a mentor, but if you can find a mentor, that's absolutely like the best way to move forward. Uh, and, and that's with like anything in life. Like imagine trying to teach yourself calculus very difficult to do. But if you can just follow a book or follow a guide 
or have someone teach you exactly how to get good at, how to like learn calculus suddenly it's just following the steps you're just on a, you're on a you're on a schedule you're on a routine and you're just doing what you exactly those things to get there um if you don't have a mentor the, the next best thing is to watch people who are better than you you know go to esca.net go to etf2l.org download those games from the pros and watch them and just follow exactly what they're doing i mean there's also like youtube channels like mine um, like there's Banny, there's like tons of other players. Shade out there is is the guy that I watch when I want to get when I want to get good at medic, and I just I just watch him play. Um, and then the nice part about being in his stream is I can just ask him questions afterwards and be like, hey, like, why did you pop over here or like when is the best time to do this, and kind of get the help that you need. But studying the pros, studying people who are better than you, learning from people who are better than you is the best way to fast track your learning towards wherever you want to go. So whether it's getting good at TF2 or you know, f learning how to like, I don't know, calculus, right? So there's, there's ways that you can do it, but the path forward is always the same. Set yourself up, get a setup that you like, that you're comfortable with, that um, you're gonna use for the rest of your life. Practice, find a way to practice that. Do it every single day and come up with a plan for how you're going to reach your dreams, reach your goals. That's how you're going to get good at Team Fortress 2. So I hope this video helps you. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.